What's up everybody? I'm Captain Jody. Welcome back to Bayou Bandit Charters. We are in the marsh this afternoon. Going to start off targeting some flounder, may shift gears over to redfish, and maybe even speckled trout. Who knows? Water temperature is sitting around 72 degrees. We're sitting at a dead low tide. If you love inshore fishing along the Alabama and Mississippi Gulf Coast, give my channel a subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Really help my channel grow. Enough talking. Let's get in here, see if we can rip some lips on some flounder. We have got good water clarity this afternoon, so I'm gonna be throwing the Smackdown. This is a Fish Bites Dirty Boxer. Uh, this color that I hadn't thrown in a while, I've been going with the Chartreuse here lately, but I've got good water clarity today, so I'm gonna try the old pink out. Very, very clean water this afternoon. I don't know if you can see on camera, but you can see the bottom everywhere out here. dead low tide there'll be no tidal movement for about an hour then it'll start coming back in oh blue crab right there What I find a lot of times when the tide is really, really low and the water's really clean and clear, those flounder will move off the bank and get in a little bit deeper water. One of their biggest predators is birds, right? Birds flying around, they can see that flounder laying on the bottom in those shallow flats in that clean water and they'll swoop down and catch them. And flounder know this, so they, they tend to pull off the bank a little bit. So as y'all see, I'm not throwing right on the bank. I'm throwing off about, about 10 or 12 foot. And there was a big redfish up right here in the shallows. I see his mud cloud. Oh, I still see that fish. There he is. There he is. Oh, that's a, that's a little rat. A little rat red. <laughs> pretty little guy one spot two spots on that side one spot on the other side pretty blue tail see you dude If y'all watched one of my last videos, y'all saw I am in the flounder tagging program from the University of South Alabama and Dolphin Island Sea Lab. So hopefully we can catch some flounder and tag them and release them. If y'all hadn't seen that video, I'll leave the link right here. We go in depth on explaining that the flounder migration habits, patterns, how fast they grow, bunch of great information that uh, I would imagine the common fisherman doesn't know. That would be a perfect spot to target flounder on about a half, half tide and falling. But we have no water in the marsh this evening. There's something right there. There we go. That's a, that's a little baby flounder. That'll be a good tag. That will be a great tagging opportunity right there <laughs> oh wow wow look at that little guy right there i have been seeing so many flounder this size on my gigging charters let's get a length on this little guy He's sitting on 12 and a half inches. Hard to believe that is a legal fish in Mississippi. I don't try not to keep any till they're about 14, 14 and a half inches long. All right, got my tagging gun here. What you wanna do, you wanna go in right here about a 45. There we go. I will log all that information in 
to the University of South Alabama. I'll leave their website link right here. If you recapture one of the flounder I have tagged, you'll get a big prize package from University of South Alabama and Dolphin Island Sea Lab, from me and from Fish Bites. Got Fish Bites on board with this program as well. All right, little guy, grow up, get bigger. See you, dude. That was so great to see that little guy. I've been seeing so many juvenile flounder in our marsh systems this year. It's great to see he's tagged and released. So now you have an opportunity to catch him throughout his life, turn in the tag number, the length of the fish, and a location where he was caught, and you get a bunch of cool prizes. Awesome program, enough talking. Let's get back in here, catch some more flounder. I haven't had the opportunity to have good fishing conditions in quite a while, and I still don't today. Last time I fished, it was the second day of a nip tide. That was very challenging. Today, we're at the bottom of a low tide, no tide movement at all. But it should pick up this afternoon when that tide starts coming back in. I really prefer a falling tide, but hey, <laughs> you go when you can go and you make the best of it. That's why it's called fishing. I've been seeing a ton of little shrimp in the marsh for the past two months. They jump everywhere. And they're so cool to watch at night with all the gigging lights on. They're almost transparent swimming along. I am telling y'all, we have got some skinny, skinny water today. Nice crabs in that trap. People always wonder why the bottom of my skag doesn't have any paint on it. This is why from idling out of these shallows, my water pump's good, I've got clean water, but that skag is dragging in the mud. Part of fishing in the bayou, y'all. being we are in one of the deeper marsh creeks i'm gonna break out the old popping cork i've got a voodoo shrimp on there we're gonna throw it a few times and see if any trout's moved in yet there we go cork under there we go Oh, ha, ha. oh, red, red. Oh, red fish. Another pretty little red fish. About the same size as the last one I caught. One spot on each side. All right, dude. Thank you for the fight. He sure pulled like he was bigger fish than what he was. Thought I had me a good keeper trout, y'all. I don't think the bigger fish is gonna come out and play till this tide starts moving. Another good thing about a cork on a windy day, you can really make some good long cast. There we go. There we go. Another rat red. Like a carbon copy 
of the last two. I guess it's gonna be a rat red kind of day till that tide starts moving. Another beautiful fish, one spot on each side. All right, buddy, thanks for the fight. Really, really tough conditions right now, y'all. Uh, the tide hadn't started coming back in yet, and that west wind is blowing about 18 to 20 miles an hour. I mean, we're in a little short protected bayou, and it's, man, you can see, it's just ripping. So we uh, put flounder fishing on hold till we get some water back in here. So we got the old popping cork. See if we can find some trout and some bigger redfish. <laughs> Stay tuned. I had rather be flounder fishing, but hey, you got to do what you can do with the conditions. And I love throwing a cork in these deeper marsh creeks on a windy day. You can get a lot of distance on your cast and pop the heck out of that cork and it'll call those fish in. The trout hadn't moved in quite yet. I do this a lot in the winter time and catch some decent trout. It's just so rough out on the main water today. We're, uh, we're in these protected little hidden, hidden creeks. Get out of that wind. Looking to get into some bigger redfish at least. This is a day for all the small fish. Three rat reds and a little short flounder. There we go. Oh, that's a better fish. That's a better fish. Feels like a better fish anyway. <laughs> oh, them little jokers are fighting y'all. Got another rat red. Goodness gracious. <laughs> he is a pretty little guy. See you, dude. Man. This place is full of rat reds. But they are tearing up his popping core. There we go. What you want to bet it's another rat red? Oh, that's a bigger one. That's a bigger one. They're getting a little bigger, y'all. They're getting a little bigger. <laughs> oh, not much. But they are getting a little bigger. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful gold colors. Gorgeous blue tail. Seventeen and a half. All right. Thank you for the fight, little dude. See ya. <laughs>